Bases and hydrates. We're going to deal with nomenclature for bases and hydrates. We'll start with bases. So naming compounds. Ionic bases contain a metal and the hydroxide polyatomic ion. So OH1 negative. You're going to name them the same way you would do any other ionic compound. So the formula, you identify the metal comes first in the name, and then you follow it up with the polyatomic ion, so sodium hydroxide. KOH, K is potassium, so this is potassium hydroxide. CuOH2, so copper is a multivalent metal, so you have to figure out the charge on the copper. So you can do the reverse crisscross. So that becomes a two and that becomes a one. Double check, is the hydroxide one negative? Yes, it is, so then it's copper two. Or you do the zero sum rule. You've got copper, you have hydroxide, you've got two times negative one for a total of negative two. So the total positive has to be plus two. And you divide it by how many coppers there are. The subscript is only one, so it has the entire positive charge. So this is copper two hydroxide. Writing formulas for bases, the same rules apply as for polyatomic compounds. So potassium hydroxide. So you've got, if, you've, if you're dealing with um, the cross and drop rule, you've got potassium with a charge of plus one, you've got hydroxide with a charge of negative one, and you do your cross and drop, or you do the zero sum. They add up to the same number. So this formula is KOH. Barium hydroxide, if you do the cross and drop, barium and hydroxide, cross and drop. It's BA bracket OH bracket two because the polyatomic ion has a subscript. You cannot write BA OH two because that formula says barium one atom oxygen one atom, hydrogen two. So you have to put brackets around the polyatomic ion. Of course, if you were doing cross um, zero sum, your barium has a charge of two plus, hydroxide has a charge of one negative, so you need two of these to make uh, a total negative of negative two. So writing formulas for bases is quite similar to polyatomic compounds. The compound ammonia, NH3, so that's a covalently bonded molecule, is also considered a base, but we'll get to that later in the course. Hydrates, these are going to be brand new for you. Hydrates are ionic compounds that have water molecules loosely bonded to them. If we heat them, we can drive off this water and we can dry the compound. When it is dry, when there's no water molecules loosely bonded to it, it's called an anhydrous salt or an anhydrous compound. So the water can be absorbed from the environment. Maybe it's sitting in a damp area and it's absorbing water from the humidity in the air.
So the formulas show the ionic compound followed by a dot. It's not a period because it's raised up in the middle. And then there's a number and then there's H2O. So the number indicates how many water molecules are bonded to the unit, the formula unit for the ionic compound. So for instance, CaCl2 dot 2H2O, that's calcium chloride, and it has two water molecules bonded to it for each unit of calcium chloride there are. So calcium chloride is a repeating unit in the compound, and each time you have a CaCl2, you have two water molecules. So to name the compounds, you name the ionic compound, and you follow it up with a prefix indicating the number of wa water molecules and the word hydrate. So this example, CuSO4, so this is copper, sulfate, but we have to indicate which copper it is. Is it copper one or copper two? Sulfate is negative two. Therefore, there's only one copper, so it must be plus two. So this is copper two sulfate. And then we're gonna use the prefix for five, which is penta. Hydrate. So all of these will be will end in the word hydrate because there's water. Think of it being as you drink water to stay hydrated. So copper two sulfate pentahydrate. Now the prefixes are normal. One is mono, two is di, three is tri, but you can have a half a water molecule bonded. So that prefix is called hemi. And you can have one and a half molecules of water attached to so that sesqui. So those are the only two uh, new prefixes for you. So hydrates are pretty straightforward. You have an ionic compound and then a dot and then the number of water molecules. So the name will say the name of the ionic compound and then there'll be a prefix to indicate the number of waters. And this first one, this first example up here was calcium chloride dihydrate. Di for two, hydrate for water. So there you go, bases and hydrates.